the things that we were hearing, like footsteps upstairs, there was a presence at the bottom of the steps, right where the banister's at. This house was owned by that church, which also had a crematory next door. Our preacher came over. As soon as he came in that front door, he automatically looked at us and said, there's a bad presence in here. Christopher had been molested in this house. Christopher committed suicide in the attic. Tell me your name. My name is Christopher. My name is Christopher. I can feel his pain. I can feel that little boy's pain. I can feel him hiding. You need to understand this family had nothing to do with what happened to you. I don't want to live here. I don't. He was scared. He didn't get no help here. Whoever was here to help him didn't help him. Christopher, did somebody hurt you? We can help you, but you got to give us a chance. We'll pack up and we'll be out of here tomorrow. Because I can't stay here anymore. This has got me so scared. We need to know why you're here and why you continue to scare this family. I was so scared. And I did want to walk around the house and I had to. I was so scared. Upstairs in the attic. Yeah. Getting ready to bend up with this thing, and freaking light blows. That sounds like something took off running. Warning, have a camera. Because I was setting up equipment. Well, it's good thing I have a camera. I can't have a camera and set up equipment at the same time. Then you film while I set up equipment. When I moved into the home, Matt had just separated from his wife. As we were moving things out of the house, we started feeling stuff. And all, the only thing I kept telling Matt was maybe there's still some attachment with the marriage. When my ex-wife had moved out and her kids, we come in, we was, you know, doing a lot of cleaning. That put a lot of stress on both of us. The things that we were hearing, like footsteps upstairs. What? It feels creepy, doesn't it? Yeah, I got a cold feel. There was a presence at the bottom of the steps, right where the banister's at. One night, Matt and I, we were sitting here talking, and we had already been arguing about things. And we didn't argue about anything till I moved in this house. So we were sitting on the couch. I kept looking over at the where the banister was, and I kept feeling something, feeling something. And I looked over at Matt, and Matt got scared. I told Matt, I said, what are you scared about? And I looked over at the banister, I got really frightened. I looked at Matt, he got really frightened. We left that night. We didn't stay here. We first got that room, we stayed in that room, and things was very good. Moved upstairs, moved our bedroom up there. It's like we opened a can to let these things come out and start to affect our lives. So then when that happened, we went down here at the church. We asked the preacher to come in and bless the home. He come to the house. He took his time, came over here. His family sat out in the van. He come in here with us. As soon as he come in that front door, he automatically looked at us and said, there's a bad presence in here. In that room, he was talking about sexual molestation. He went through these rooms. He didn't say a whole lot. There had been a lot of arguing in the front room. As he went upstairs, when you walk upstairs, there's a great big open room that you have four bedrooms and a bathroom and a door that goes up to the attic. As soon as he approached the top of the steps, he felt a boy. His name was Christopher. 
Christopher had been molested in this house. And he, the hairs are standing up on my arms right now. Christopher committed suicide in the attic. He said the attic was really bad. That there was a girl that lived here that was a slasher. And there was a lot of that going on in the attic. There was a lot of words to negative songs and stuff that we painted over. He prayed on the second floor and he asked Christopher to leave. That's when all hell broke loose. And then it's just like, you know, the house as a whole that said, okay, enough's enough. We're gonna make you guys bad a little bit. Do you feel that the more that you guys try to reach out and get help, the worse things the get? The worse torn turmoil gets, yeah. Okay, and I yeah. feel it's a, it's a sexual presence or whatever it is. It, it's either, it, it, it's sexually doing something. I, I, I'm not sure how to explain that. The worst place I feel it, in that attic, there's a cubby hole. And when I did go up there and I was praying, I felt something in that cubby hole and I brought Matt upstairs. I'd get a couple steps up into the attic. And it's like, oh, you know, I just, I don't feel comfortable with this. I got in that cubby hole and I told Matt, I said, be honest with you, if I don't come out of here, I said, you better call the police or somebody. I said, that's how frightened I am, Matt. I said, because I don't know how far this goes. I've not been in here. He's never been in that hole. Well, when you go in the hole, you can see to the left, you can see to the right, but when you go to the right, there's another little place back to the right. I got so frightened when I seen that. I backed back out of that hole, we shut the attic door, and I've not been back up there. Okay, so we got an alarm by this hole, so if something comes through it, it will let us know. We put a board up against it in a brick, in my mind, thinking I could hold it in there. Okay, but that's not where Christopher committed suicide. He committed suicide under the, the, on, the awning. Do you the, have any knowledge of why he committed suicide? He's being sexually molested. We did find out by a woman who lived here in 1950. Not to say this has anything to do with anything, but on account of what the news talks about. This house was owned by that church, which also had a crematory next door which also had the funeral home right there on the corner. All of this was related at one time. There was a child molested in this home and committed suicide. He picked out the bedroom that he stayed in, so there's been a lot of anger and a lot of sexual things in this home. Me, physically, I've been ill since I've been here. Since the family has been so physically and emotionally drained, we asked them to leave the house during the investigation. Christopher, if you're up here with us, my name's Josh and this is Rocky. We just want to talk with you. I can hardly breathe. I know, so can I. So my chest is so tight. It's like I'm taking deep breaths to breathe. Let me. You do that again? Did you kill yourself up here? Don't move. Something's I touching think me. That there, there was something that went to the left. Don't move. It's Stop. behind you. Look at this. There it is. I got goosebumps so bad. It's bad. If you killed yourself up here, could you please tell us your name? Can you come in here with us? It keeps knocking back here. And that's where I thought I seen something. This is the room that. Okay, it's all the same. No, it's in that left side. This one? Yeah. Are you back here?
We don't mean you any harm. I just want you to talk to me. Christopher, would you please come out here and talk with us? Okay, just let it come to us. Thank you. Can you please come in here with us? You're scaring the family. Do you realize that? I'm in the kitchen. I got my eyes closed, hands closed, praying to God. I'm walking around. I'm blindsided in the kitchen with my eyes shut, just kind of walking around and everything. All of a sudden, to the left, I feel something. It was something there. And when I felt it, I went to reach out to see if I could touch it. And I touched the trim on the door and screamed. There was something there, but by me touching the door, I thought I touched it. it. Scared me to death. If you're in their bedroom, can you give us a sign? Can you do that louder, please? If you're the one scaring this family, I command you to do something right now. Leave the bedroom and come up here with us right now. Show yourself. Let's go back there where they think that the Christopher killed himself. Okay, hold on a second. Is this where you killed yourself? Is this where you killed yourself? Was Christopher, was that you? It's freezing in here. Uh, something around my neck. It's freezing cold. Christopher, give me a sign. I just felt a breeze. What was so bad in your life that you had to kill yourself? He's mad. He is very, very mad. He's not going to let us have a relationship. We have this house for sale because I can't stay here anymore. This has got me so scared. Most of the people in my life that I know, that I loved, are all dead. My mom, my dad, a child, a husband. Okay, they're all dead. 
I don't know if maybe I've got one of them with me. It could be me in this house. I, I don't know. Could be a presence from the farm that he brought. Could be him and his wife arguing. You know, it could have been, like the preacher said, you know, there was a lot of fornication that's went on in this house throughout the whole history of this house. But it's got me so bothered that I've got my camper sitting out there. And it's got in it what I need, including money to eat. The minute we left that room and came in here, feel how much easier it is to breathe in here? Yeah. I don't think whatever he did was in this room. I think it was in that room. Yeah, but I think we should be running the ghost box. We will. No, I mean, they try to get a name. Okay. Him and I know that this is, it's not us. We know that it's something here. We can go to my son's and stay the night, wake up and bust in. Don't wake up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning. As I sit here, to me, in there, there's something. There's something in there. I felt it before we put up the curtain. I felt it before we put all the furniture in there. I won't go up them stairs without turning that light on. I won't come down without turning that light on. I have fell on down a stairway and broken my tailbone. I don't know what it might do. It's done right out and touched me once. He's got this house for sale. My son wants to rent this house right now, him and his girl. They have, she has a baby in her belly. Hell no. I told him, not until we find out what's in this house. If there's something in this house, you two will not move in this house. I'm scared that presence could take over that baby. You don't know. Christopher. Christopher, are you up here with us? You say Josh again. You don't like Josh? Yes. What do you want from the family? I don't know. Tell me your name. My name is Christopher. Did you hide something in the walls? seems with a lot of these cases when you're dealing with the families and stuff is the children because they're the most vulnerable yeah. are usually the ones that take the brunt of the attack so we can relate to everything that you guys are going through how things start off small and innocent mm -hmm. and before you know it you have a full-fledged haunting and you guys are trapped in the middle of this nightmare we've spent the last 10 years helping families so it's something that we all three take very serious. There's always the chance now that you've taken the steps to move forward and resolve the situation that things may get worse. So just be prepared for that. And you just have to understand when you guys are together as one, fighting the same battle, it weakens it. When you're dealing with any type of a haunting like this, there's a winner and there's a loser. Mm -hmm. So we just have to make sure we're on the winning side of everything. So it's important for you guys to fall back on your faith. Yes. Know that you are strong enough to stand up against this. Yes. And don't let it divide you because as it divides you guys, it becomes more powerful. And that's what that's how it's been gaining its power. That's how it's been gaining. We heard knocking coming from this bedroom. Can you do that now that we're in here? Can you shut that camera off? Do something, let us know that you're in this house with us. That camera just went off. Why would you ask it to do that? So it would give us a sign. Well, we don't need that kind of sign. That's an expensive, expensive camera to break. I think in a way I'm too frightened. You know, I'm in the house by myself. If 
by myself with not somebody else trying to help, I'm not messing with it. I'm not messing with that. I myself is not powerful enough to mess with that. Well, that's why we're here. Get you guys through this, and hopefully at the end, everything will be peaceful. And Okay, thank you, but don't turn our camera off again. But thank you. If that's him who's still here, he's clinging to me. Maybe for understanding, maybe for mother. I don't know, but that really messes with me because there's a lot of mis misconduct sexually in this house, and I'm a victim of that throughout my whole entire life growing up, being a woman, marriage, everything else. So I think it's got a pinpoint on me with that also. If you did kill yourself in this house, we're not here to judge you or condemn you. We just want to talk to you about it. Do you have a message for somebody? Seems anytime you talk about him, you get more emotional. I don't know if he's trying to get me to help him. I don't know. But see how emotional I'm getting now? I'm feeling like I'm, I don't know. Maybe I'm feeling like him. I can feel his pain. I can feel that little boy's pain. I can feel him hiding. I can feel him hiding. He was one scared little boy, I do know that. He was scared, he didn't get no help here. Whoever was here to help him didn't help him. But I don't know if he was too scared to tell him. <laughs> or if they just didn't want to listen to me. If you're in this house, what area are you in right now? You in the basement? Yes. And this has been really hard because I want to argue with Matt. I love Matt. Oh, is that you? All right. I'm going to just point. Like something going right when you walked out. I'm upstairs and I'm laying in the mattress and laying on the mattress, covered up, kind of freaked out about being in there. In the closet, it was just an eerie feeling, a dark feeling from the closet. It's kind of getting a little bit edgy. I heard footsteps by the door, outside the door. It wasn't Matt or the dog by that bedroom door. But to me, it had gotten the satisfaction because it got me out of my bed into another room, into another bed. I got so frightened, I come down here. And go back up there. He was standing this far away from me while I was in bed. You know, just speaking to me, just, just plain as day. I've got this bedroom door shut. If you want to go in the bedroom, I want you to open the door and go in there. And then I had to stay here in the house by myself for a while because we had gotten into an argument, he got mad and he left. And I had to be here by myself for a little while and I was so scared. And I didn't want to walk around the house and I had to. I was so scared. Give us a sign of your presence. It was here and it was happy. It was happy. And it scared me so bad. I didn't go to sleep. Matter of fact, I only got two, two hours sleep after he come back. About nine to 11, we got up, had the day again. I went two days. It was about four and a half hours sleep of arguing and fighting with him and what was in this house. And it just, it's got me so tore down. I'm a full-time college student and can't even get online to do my homework right now. We're trying to start this business. It's just got me so disturbed. No, it's here. 
That's why it messes with me so much. When it starts to bother her, it just it tears me up. I've always been pretty good at controlling things, you know, understanding things, but I don't understand any of this. And it scares me. He's felt the fear. He's felt he's felt the fear. But I know I love her with all my heart. I am scared. I wanna leave. I don't wanna live here. I don't. I don't want to live here. I haven't even went back to church yet. You want to know why? And that's killing me. I don't want to take it with me. I think it's trying to keep you from going to church. I don't want to have something attached to me and take it into my church. I may not be able to do that, but I don't know. I don't want to do that. Because when I go to church, I go to church, I praise God. I get on that altar, I praise God. I thank God for everything he gives me every day. But on account of this, I, can't, I have not been able to step back in my church. And they've called, they've sent cards. Were you sexually assaulted or molested inside this house? Christopher, did somebody hurt you when you were living inside this house? We can help you, but you got to give us a chance. Upstairs. Yeah, it's upstairs. Let's go. Oh, that door shut. What did you call us up here for? Christopher, talk to us. We need to know why you're here and why you continue to scare this family. see this ball of energy move away from me. Something just touched me. Yes, sir, something growl. Oh, sh 
It's right there. It's right there. That was loud. There it is again. Christopher, come up here. What's the knocking on the door? Got it closed. Do something, knock louder. It's just right there. I'm not gonna come back up here and get it myself. Gosh. You said you wanted to stay up here by yourself. Yeah. Let's just go slow. And it's not... right there. It's behind you. It's in the closet. Ooh, it's moving. If you try to shut this up here, hit the door right now. Jesus Christ. It doesn't work. This is where the light blew. It went in the hole. It's still red. So you get like playing in this hole? Is the hole like your safe spot to go to? Burnt you, burnt you? Yeah, I feel like freaking somebody came up and just just about like laid a curl on her on the way. <gasps> Show yourself right now. Something was hidden. Can you tell us where it's hidden at? Christopher, can you hear me? Yes. 
I got a device here. If you get close to it, these lights will light up. And then I'll know you're here. Can you direct me to the area? I don't know, I'm not getting any spikes or anything back here. Lord, I ask that you just please watch over us and defend us as we enter into battle and be our protection against anything wicked or evil. I ask that you watch over this family and just keep them safe. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, by the sign of the sacred cross, you are no longer allowed to enter into this room. In the name of Jesus Christ, cast out any spirits inside this room and make it clean once again. It's okay to go towards the light and to finally be at peace. Lord, we just ask that you please forgive him for his sins and allow him to cross over and be with you and to finally be happy. Thank you for bringing us in contact with this family. I ask that you guard over them and keep them safe. Well, we appreciate everything from you guys. Yes, thank you for everything you guys have done. Yeah. Yes, thank you thank very you. much.